Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Radiography is a procedure which uses x-rays to record clear images of all details lying within a subject, regardless of their location. Tomography is a radiographic procedure by which images are obtained of details located in a layer at one predetermined depth within the subject. Dynamic tomography is an advanced form of tomography that produces images of details lying at any depth within the subject. And this layer of in-focus details can be varied continuously throughout the subject. Radiographic films usually have an emulsion on each side of the film base. Now when an exposure is made, we are producing identical images on each side of the film. Now we'll place this film on the viewer, comparing it with the fully exposed film. That would represent the image on one side of the film, and here is the image on the other side of the film. Now when radiographs are viewed, the image seen by the observer is the sum of the perfectly superimposed images contained in the two emulsions. Hence the image of a detail exhibiting correct density and contrast is actually the sum of two images, each displaying one half of the final density and contrast. This same property would apply if the two emulsions with their identical images were on separate film bases rather than one. A radiograph differs from a photograph in that all details within the subject record on the radiograph but not on the photograph. As an example, you can see the right side of this skull. You cannot see the left side nor the details that are inside. On a radiograph, all of these details would be visible. Now we'll take the calvarium off of this skull and look in detail at, at this little pin that's in, sticking in his forehead. It's made of metal, and so it will be a radiopaque shadow. Now on the back of the skull, there is a similar pin, and it too will record on the radiographs as well as all details in between. Now we'll put our friend back together again. Now I have a cassette that is loaded with one sheet of film and I'm going to locate the skull so that it faces the film. We are making a posterior anterior radiograph of this skull. Now the x-ray machine is in position. We can see the cone of the machine. And I want to make my first underexposed picture with the rays coming from an angle like this. After this underexposure has been completed, I will remove this film, place a fresh one in the film holder, and then we will make the second radiograph. The second one will be made with the rays directed from an angle like this. So we will end up with two non-identical underexposed radiographs which display all the details in the subject. All right, here are the two radiographs. This is the pin that's in the front of the head. This is the pin in the back. Note the spacing between them. 
In the other radiograph, this is the pin in the front, this is the pin in the back, and the spacing is much wider. Now I'll slide the two radiographs, one upon the other, in an attempt to superimpose the images. And you see, I can't quite force it to superimpose. However, I can cause the two images of the pin to reinforce one another. And so all details that lie in the plane containing the pin now are in focus. The images of the other pin initially were underexposed and of low contrast. They are not superimposed on a similar image, but some other low contrast, uh, low density image. So they're largely subdued. Now by orienting these films differently, I can cause the pin at the back of the head to come into focus. And so a layer of tissue, including this pin, would now be in focus. A third orientation would bring these, these screws in the side of the head into focus. So it seems by simply shifting the films, can I bring various planes of details into focus. Now other orientations of the two radiographs could bring into focus details lying in any other parallel plane. Unwanted details can be blurred out more effectively if instead of having the final image built from two underexposed radiographs, we use eight underexposed radiographs. Here is my object that I'm radiographing. Now imagine a circle up above the patient and let us locate the source at number one. With the source stationary, we're going to give a brief exposure exposing film number one. Following that, we will move the source an eighth of the way around the circle to position number two, and we will expose film number two. This is repeated eight times until we have completed the circle. Then we will end up with eight underexposed radiographs. All right, this is the first of the eight radiographs, and we've put it on this dynamic tomograph viewer. Now, there's an illuminated area in the center which shows the image to be very uh, low in density and contrast. Now look at the top of the, of the uh, film. It fits onto a pin and by turning the control knob I can cause that film to move upward simply by moving the pin upward or downward. All the other eight radiographs will be similarly located. Now we'll put the rest of the films on. Now the order in which I place the films is of no consequence at all. Each one, however, has to have its own uh, orientation. This is a radiograph of half a head. This is cadaver material. It's of an individual, a child macrocephalic. We're going to look through this specimen using dynamic tomography. This is one of eight radiographs that I have located on the viewer, and now we'll proceed to put the other eight in place. They fit on pins, so they're very carefully oriented. Now each of these eight films was made from a slightly different angle. There we have all eight. Now when I turn the knob, the films all move radially. Now I'll turn a light on so that you can see the, the image. Now we're zooming in 
and since shortly we'll have images of teeth. Now we'll start way back here in the mandibular second molar region. There are four little white spots, which are the calcified areas. Then anterior to it, we have the image of the first molar. And then anterior of that, we have the second primary molar. And underneath it would be the second bicuspid. And then the first primary molar and the first bicuspid, and then the primary cuspid, permanent cuspid, lateral, permanent lateral, and central, and central. And then, of course, the same thing for the maxillary teeth. So I can bring into focus details that lie in any plane of my choice. Now we'll go to the spinal column region. And here we see the individual segments of the spinal column. And I can focus at the midline where it's been cut and then all the way back to the other side of the segments of the spinal column. So merely by turning the knob, can we bring into focus these various planes? Now next we'll turn to another head. In this individual, uh, who uh, this is a this is a picture of an infant who died at birth. We're looking at a frontal section that shows the in, the inner ear uh, structures. We see the semicircular canals. Now here we'll be able to develop the cochlea. All right, there is cochlea. It's a spiral that goes in a clockwise direction. Now there should be one over here, but I don't see it yet. It's at a slightly different level. So we go to this proper level, and there is cochlea going around the other way. Now we'll continue to go further forward in the individual. We're to the base of the skull. Now we're deep in the orbit region. Coming forward, here is the mandibular um, primary molar. Then we have a cuspid, laterals, and mandibular uh, centrals. We see the midline suture. And the maxillary centrals are a little more anterior of that. So we can look at, look at the teeth in frontal section. Dial in at any depth we wish. Now next, I like to show another head. This is the same fetal head that we're looking at. However, this time we'll show it in horizontal section. This round marker indicates that uh, we're at the top of the head. Now we'll slowly go down through the head. And you notice all that's happening is the outline of the skull is changing. Now out of these twin white areas, we'll develop the inner ear structures. There they are. Now we want to get all the possible detail in there that we can. Now, here are two black dots. These represent one semicircular canal that lies in a vertical plane, and we've chopped through it horizontally, so it shows up as two black dots. Now, if I move the plane of focus, I should be able to, to join those two dots with a line. And there you see we're at the top of the semicircular canal, joined as a line. Now turning to the teeth up at the top here. I'm having troubles trying to find the plane I want to show. All right, we're, we're all the way down. We're underneath the mandible now. There's not a thing in focus. 
So now we slowly come up, and here's the midline suture, and these are the mandibular teeth. And uh, then we go up a little higher. Here are the mandibular centrals. Anterior to them, we have the incisal edges of the maxillary centrals. They widen, they get round, and then they disappear as we rise above them. Now we'll go to a last skull, this of a, an adult. All right, this is a dynamic tomography survey of an adult skull with no mandible present. Uh, lead letter E, right here, is located at about the level of his eyebrows. Now we're going to descend from there. Now at this level over here is a screw which holds a um, clip on that would hold the calvarium on. Now we go down and pick up the clip. There, there's the clip. Now in the temple region, there's another screw to which a rubber band or spring is attached that uh, would hold the mandible in place. Now in the center, we will bring, bring into focus Christogalli. There is Christogalli. Now, as we go down a little farther, we find the nasal region and the sphenoid sinus. Now we have a groove here that's in the floor of the orbit that seems to run back of the sphenoid sinus. Then at a slightly lower level, this groove seems to run into the nasal area. Now we'll go to the inner ear structures back here and develop the, their images. Now next we'll go up to the maxillary sinus region. There's the maxillary sinus. And we do have a zygomatic arch here on the left side. Good. Now we'll go deeper. Now we are looking at the root apex of the maxillary third molar. And now we see there are three apices on the second molar. And then deeper, we see there are two root canals in the bicuspids. And then finally, we get down to the pulp chambers of the teeth and finally to the occlusal surfaces. So now we'll go back up apically. Watch the teeth disappear. Sinuses, cheekbone show. And then they disappear. The screws in the temple region. The clip. And the screw that holds the clip on. And then finally, capital letter E which is up here at the level of his eyebrows. So I have shown you via dynamic tomography how we can survey a patient who um, is newborn and all the way up through his adult life. Thank you. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.